Welcome back to my channel English Literature for Internet. In this lecture, I will be further talking about few more writers from the age of revival. Uh, my discussion will be revolving around Thomas Eliot, uh, Roger Ashton, who wrote the famous book Talks of Phyllis. And uh, further, I will be talking about the literature of English Reformation, uh, which was very, very important that uh, England was going through the Reformation times and how literature was written during those times. And uh, also, I'll be talking about William Tyndale uh, and I'll be talking about the all the versions of the Bible, how Bible came into existence and the current Bible which we are reading. So I will request you to be with me for another 20 to 30 minutes and I'll be discussing about the writers I have mentioned uh, one by one. So the first writer uh, in this lecture series I'm, I'm going to talk about is Thomas Eliot who was born in 1490 and who died in 1546 and he wrote the book named The Governor to King. Chief concern of the elite book was to demonstrate a ruling aristocracy that common god of realm depends on the proper education of male upper class. Eliot was aware of the fact that he was writing in for an age which delighted in scholarly novelty. Also, the elite appointment to ambassador to Charles V was alluded to by Strius Eliot in fourth quarter. And uh, this reference is very, very easy to remember. Thomas Eliot and T.S. Eliot both have the same surname. It's just the difference is of the spellings. So in the four quarters, he has discussed about the T.S. Eliot has discussed about uh, Eliot's appointment to Charles V. This might be asking you in DNA. Next is the Doctrine of Princes, which was written in 1533. The Castle of Hill, 1537, an important manual promoting the theory of humors and platonic dialogue and, and compilation from the Fathers of Church. His Latin English Dictionary was first book published in England under the title There is Life by S.C. E. Lambert. Next, I'll be talking about Roger Eschem, born in 1515 and died in 1568. Uh, he wrote Toxophilus, his dialogue on the pleasure of archery, which was published in 1545. And the next is The Schoolmaster, written in 1563. Uh, attempts to set out in plain and unfussy English the advantages and uses of classical education. And it was uh, published posthumously in 1570. So when he died in 1570, the book was published. It recommends the kindness, not cohesion, as the wisest course for a teacher. The book preface pointedly refers to Eschem's reading Demosthenes in Greek with Queen Elizabeth as an after-dinner relaxation. Toxophilus, Caesarian dialogue between Toxophilus, lover of shooting, and Philologus, lover of learning. It was dedicated to Henry VIII, which is very, very important. It might be asked that Toxophilus was uh, dedicated to which monarch? Ashton died four years after Shakespeare's birth in 1568. In 1568, uh, we all know that the great playwright William Shakespeare was born. And four years before that, Roger Ashton died. Closely associated with Queen Elizabeth, Samuel Johnson wrote a life of Ashton. This, this is again a very important thing that if suppose if there is a writer who has written a biography about the other writer, that becomes very, very important. Schoolmaster has an impact on Sydney's defense of poetry. Uh, next, I'll be talking about the literature of English transformation. So how, because uh, I previously talked in the lecture that how Latin and Italian were having influence on the English writing, but yet the English writing was not matured at that point of time when Thomas More and uh, the other writers were writing. But now comes the phase of English reformation. Uh, and also the literature was also kind, kind of going through the same kind of ref reformation. And in that lieu, I will be talking about Thomas Cramer, uh, who was born in 1489 and who died in 1556. Uh, and he died one year before the publication of Tottel's Miscellany. And I have already mentioned in, the, in my previous lecture that what was the date when Tottel Miscellany was published. So uh, I would like to recall you recall that 
and I would like that you should be recalling uh, the date uh, very frequently. And John Fox tells a story in his Acts and Monuments or Books of Matthias glorified death of Cramer. This is very, very, very important that uh, the John Fox who is telling the story of in his Acts and Monuments is actually talking about the death of Cramer and he is glorifying that death. He was responsible for promulgation of 10 articles in 1536. First official dissemination of Bible was done under his leadership. Monasteries were dissolution by 1536 to 1539 who created the effect of dissolution, extinction of traditional religious communities, destruction of building. Those who benefited more from confiscation of monastic and chantry land were laymen and noblemen and gentlemen in particular. In 1549, an act of uniformity was imposed. The English liturgy and set forth new book of common prayer. A common prayer book was introduced uh, and the people were uh, supposed to read from that common uh, book of prayers only. And in Edward VI, son of Henry VIII died in 1553. And then successively, Queen Mary also died in 1558. The religious and political negatives was assiduously reversed by Henry VIII and uh, the third surviving child of Elizabeth. The second prayer book of Edward VI was published in 1559. Church of England became the established form of Elizabethan religious life. And uh, now you will understand that situations were getting favorable uh, as soon as the English uh, literature and English language and English lifestyle was getting prominence and how at, in the Elizabethan age uh, that contributed in flourishment of uh, the writers like William Shakespeare and uh, the other writers and and then I'll be talking about the uh, English translation of the Bible and why there was need of English tra translation so the reformer of English church played a consistent stress on using vernacular in worship. So uh, earlier on uh, in the uh, older age, uh, what was happening is that the English church was not given so much importance. So the Catholic church was given more important at that point of time. But later on, while the reformation of the churches were going on in England, uh, the reformers actually focused on the using the vernacular language in, uh, in worship and at that point of time English uh, which was getting more centralized so uh, it was being used on the holy scriptures in a scholarly translation which freed from distortion and inaccuracies in, in of latin vulgate so as I told you that uh, latin vulgate bible they were having lots of inaccuracies and uh, also uh, there were lots of distortion and that is the only reason that translation and attempt to translate the Bible was made so that the any kind of distortion which was available in the Latin Vulgate that should uh, be removed and it was sure that there was a need for English Bible translated from the Hebrew and Greek originals Thomas Cromwell was uh, that of lavishly printed Great Bible revised and reissued under Cromwell's patronage. And uh, if I talk about the Wycliffe Bible, it was written in 1395 and it was uh, sorry, it was published in 1395 and it was written in 1382. Uh, and Great Bible also went through the revision, but William Tyndale was prominent among them. Okay, so uh, I'll be talking about uh, the successions of the Bible and like you can understand the fact that the chronology kind of questions are coming in internet a lot. So it could be possibility uh, that they might ask the questions from the chronology of the Bible. So. Uh, in 1384, Wycliffe's Bible was published. In 1388, it was revised. In 1526, William Tyndale's Bible was published. And in 1535, Miles Coverdale first printed Bible in English. So if anybody asks which was the first printed Bible in English, it was Miles Coverdale Bible, which was published in 1535. 
and uh, Gutenberg printed the Bible in 1450. The, the great printer of that, that point of time was uh, Gutenberg and then Tyndale translated New Testament from Hebrew in 1525. These are very, very good to know information and it will be really, really helpful for you uh, to attempt the chronology question if at all they are being asked in internet. So uh, apart from that, uh, if I talk about the English Bible, before the Reformation, English writers and readers knew the Bible from Vulgate, paraphrases and translations such as those of Cademan, Bede and Command of, uh, you know, uh, Henry VIII. The earliest complete English Bible uh, was the translation of Bible was Lollard on Wycliffe Bible in 1352. It was highly literal rendering of Vulgate. William Tyndale completed the New Testament in 1526 and revised it in 1535. Miles Coverdale revised, revised uh, 1488 to 1568 and completed Tyndale's work producing the first complete uh, Bible in English and it was first printed English Bible uh, which was uh, published in 1535. I have earlier also talked about the Miles Coverdale Bible. So it was the first translated English Bible written by Miles Coverdale and which was published in 1535. And then come the Geneva Bible 1557 and it was divided into verses. This became the basis of English Church first Bible in 1535 and this became the basis of English Church first official Bible. The Great Bible 1539-40 to 40, later revised as Bishop's Bible or Bishop's Bible. Contemporary with Tyndale and Coverdale, other translations include George Joy, Parts of Old Testament and Richard Tavenor. In Elizabethan reign, Roman Catholics now exiled in their return produced Bible uh, NT1582 Old Testament and then uh, then comes the uh, James 1 Bible, the James 1 who was the uh, great, you know, monarch at that point of time. Uh, at a conference in 1604 called by James 1 to try to create a religious uniformity, the Puritans complained of mistranslation of in great Bible and suggested there should be new translation. So the reason why they translated English Bible was being written even the complaint were coming for that Bible also and uh, the common masses, they appealed to the James one to bring more authenticate translation of the Bible and Calvinistic Geneva Bible was written in 1560 and Bishop Bible was introduced in the reign of Elizabeth one. Now this Elizabeth one is the same monarch or same queen which actually uh, united the Protestant, the Catholics uh, both of them thank you so much for watching my lecture and if you like this video please do not forget to like subscribe and share this with your friends who are actually preparing for internet and there could be a possibility that there are many students who come from the rural background and this is my mission for those people and those students who cannot afford the coaching centers so I am providing this video lecture free of cost and I'm sure that definitely you will be getting lots of information and you will be able to attempt more number of questions uh, in internet. So thank you so much.